And now we can see that the process is complete. Uh, so we can go back to our EC2 instances. And now we can see that there is a Veeam backup instance that has been deployed. So if I click on that instance, what we need to do now is do the initial configuration of the instance. So it's deployed, it has all the settings that it needs. Now we need to go and actually connect to this, uh, this instance itself. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open up a, uh, I'm gonna click copy here on the public DNS name. So I'm gonna open up a new web page. I'm gonna go to that IP address or that, that DNS name, making sure that I go to HTTPS. I'm going to click Advanced and accept the risk and continue. This just has to do with the certificate, self-signed certificate. And as you can see, we, we are doing the initial configuration of the instance itself. So we need to read through the EULA. I'm gonna click Accept. And now we need to put in the instance ID itself. So if I go back over to my EC2 instances, make sure that I'm clicked on the server. I can see instance ID right here. I can click copy to clipboard. Go back over. Paste that in there. Click next. Now we're gonna create an admin and password uh, to be able to manage this instance. So I'm gonna create uh, let's call one Veeam admin. Then I'm gonna create a password. You can create whatever admin password uh, combination that you want. And once you do, click create. And finish the configuration. So I'm gonna log in using the account that we just created. Then I'm gonna click on configuration. And as you can see, there's a list of to-do items that we must accomplish before we can create our first policy. So if I click on this first one, by default, the CloudFormation template or uh, script that we went through creates a default backup restore IAM user. Uh, IAM is, is uh, identity and access management, and this is kind of the security aspect within uh, AWS that manages what users or roles can do what options. So again, this one's created by default. I'm gonna use that, but if you wanted to create your own, you can click add here. Also, uh, notice up here, you can click on backup admins. This is the account that we're logged into now, but here's where you could add other admins to be able to log in and manage these policies. So I'm gonna click back on getting started and I need to configure workers. Uh, firstly, I'm gonna talk real briefly about what a worker is. So uh, a worker instance is a, a Linux-based EC2 instance that performs the role of a backup proxy. Uh, it's responsible for interaction with S3 repositories, uh, performing data copy task, file level restore, uh, anytime we need to touch data uh, that's when a, a worker is deployed. But as soon as that process is complete, the worker is removed and it's not sitting there. So workers are only deployed as needed whenever there's uh, data to be moved or, or manipulated. So I'm going to click Add. Uh, important to note up here, it's going to use this IAM role, uh, the default one that was created, and that's fine with me. Uh, but if you were going to create your own, uh, you can click Change and choose which one you want to use. I'm gonna click add. I need to choose which region I want these to be in. So I'm gonna, again, mine were deployed into US West. You can choose whichever one is, is uh, where your instances are deployed. And the availability zone. So if I go back to my management console and click on one of my instances, or actually right here as well, I can see there and there which availability zone my instances are in. So I'm gonna go back over here and I'm gonna choose US West 1B. Click Next. And now I need to choose the network settings. So I'm gonna choose my VPC. I'm gonna choose my subnet. And I'm gonna choose the security group that I wanna use. 
By default, during the CloudFormation template, you can see that one was created for us. But I'm also, I have this one that I know that has the right rules, so I'm gonna use it. But you could leverage this one by default, or you can choose your own. Uh, this is the beauty of it. So I'm just gonna choose this one. Click Next. And here's a summary of the options that we've chosen. Uh, one thing to note down here, this warning is just warning us that there's no S3 endpoint uh, for that subnet. Uh, again, that's just a warning. Since we're going to be using uh, the public access or public internet access on the uh, subnet, uh, that's completely fine. So I can access S3 across the internet. Um, if you weren't going to uh, have internet access on these instances, uh, you would need to use an S3 endpoint, and this is just giving you a warning about that. You can learn more about that in the Help Center guide, uh, as well as uh, the AWS uh, help guides as well on what an endpoint is. Click finish. And we've created our worker instances. So I'm going to go back to getting started. And now I need to create a repository. So I'm going to click add repository. And this brings me up into that. But first I need to create an S3 bucket to leverage as a repository. So if I go back to my management console, click services, and then underneath storage, you can see S3. I'm going to click on S3. I'm going to click Create Bucket. And I'm going to call it Theme Backup for AWS. You can name it whatever you want to name it. I need to make sure that it's in the region that I want it to be in. And then I'm going to leave all the other settings. Oh, someone already has that name. Demo. Click Next. And as I was saying, I'm going to leave all the other settings as default. And then I'm going to click Create Bucket. Now that I have that done, I can go back to my management console over here. Let's give that repository a name. I'm just going to call it Veeam backup repo you can give it a description click next i'm going to choose this default backup restore iam role again if you had multiple ones you could choose uh, to create a different one there's also a handy link right here to uh, will take you to instructions on that click next now i need to select my bucket so i'm going to click select I'm going to click Rescan here to make sure that I have the up-to-date list. Okay, Veeam Backup for AWS Demo Bucket. That's the one we just created. Click OK. I'm going to create a new folder in there. we we'll call it Veeam Backups. You can call it whatever you want to call it. Click Next. I could choose to enable encryption on the bucket. I'm just going to leave it as blank. And then here's the summary of the settings that I've chosen. And click Finish. All right, so we've done all those steps. Now we're ready to create our first policy. Let's give it a name. You can give it a description. Click Next. Again, I'm going to choose that default role that's created for us by default. Click Next. I need to add a region. Again, mine are in US West. You can choose whichever ones yours, yours are in. Click Apply. Click Next. I'm going to choose to protect all resources, but if I wanted to, I could choose to protect certain resources. And I could choose to protect instances, or I could choose those by tags. But again, I'm just going to choose to protect all of them within that region. Click Next. But I do need to exclude a server. So I'm going to click Add Instances. 
And I'm going to choose my Veeam backup for AWS instance. And the reason why I'm doing that is because during the cloud formation script, we chose to automatically take snapshots of this backup server. So I don't need to do backups of it. So I'm going to check that and click apply. Click next. And now I can choose to enable snapshots. These are the EBS snapshots of the instances running inside of EC2. So I'm going to enable that. I'm going to leave mine as setting, or I'm sorry, as seven. And then I'm going to choose to do that daily at 10 p.m. You can choose whatever schedule that you like or how many ever snapshots that you want to keep. Click next. I'm also going to choose to enable backups. Backups are going to be where we copy that uh, into, S, into that S3 repository that we created. So I'm going to choose to enable that. Click select. Choose my repo bucket. Click apply. And then now I'm going to set a schedule on that. I'm going to say, I want to keep mine for 90 days. Again, I can choose a time. I'm going to choose 10.30. I'm doing my snaps at 10. I'm going to do my backups at 10.30. And I can choose days. Do it every day. You can choose whatever options that you want to, want to check. And we'll show you why it's kind of neat here in a second on the cost estimation screen. But I'm going to do mine daily. Keep them for 90 days. Let's click next. This is the, what's unique to Veeam. So this is really cool. So this shows you what it's costing to run this policy with the settings that we've specified on a monthly basis. So it shows me how much it costs for each of my servers for the snapshots, how much it will cost for the backup storage, how much it will cost for the traffic and the transaction charges to send it over to the backup storage, and then a total cost. I can export this data to a CSV or an XML file. It's this is really neat. Uh, and then you can click down here to get more information about how this costing is, is generated and what it means uh, by clicking this KB link down here. I'm going to click next. I could choose to automatically retry this. I can enable notifications and put in an email address. But for purposes of this demo, I'm just going to click next. And here's a summary screen of all the settings that we have. I'm going to click finish. And this is creating the policy. So once this policy is created, we're done. I can click exit configuration. And we're done. But through the magic of editing here, as you could tell, uh, I've since run my policy and have uh, my servers being protected. But your policy will run at the schedule you've created. Uh, congratulations, though. You've configured your Veeam instance. You've deployed it, of course. You've configured it. You've added a repository. You've added a policy. And you're protecting your instances. Great job.